What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Drake and Jimmy Jew Show. My name is Drake Peterson, and that over there is the sparkling Jimmy Jew. And as always, we are joined by our producer, Christopher McCone. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at, at Drake and Jimmy Jew, or Jimmy's personal is Jimmy Jew81, and mine is Drake Trumpet Jam. You can buy merch and sign up for our newsletter by visiting drakeandjimmyjew.com. And if you happen to like this episode, please leave us a review and hit that subscribe button. So on today's episode, we... <laughs> have one of my good friends and he is very handsome he's very entertaining he's the man with a silver tongue and a golden voice please welcome musician mike dangerously what hello up, guys Pepper. thanks for having me on for some reason this feels more like a hollywood squares i don't know why <laughs> does it kind of feel hollywood i mean i got, I got the square thing going so i'm like a hollywood squares going on right now yeah. I think it's because Michael has amazing glasses on right now. And is that what it is? The most perfect mustache. Oh, uh, you know, it's a little asymmetrical today, but th these are prescription. Oh, they're, they're subscription sunglasses. Yeah. Oh, I thought the mustache was prescription. <laughs> <laughs> because he must ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> there, Chris Reezy, J Bug, and Caught Rain. He used to have the yeah. big long ones too. He'd always have that little comb on him. Yeah, Wherever yeah. he went, he was yeah. always ready. Mike, how long does it take, you, how yeah, how it take you to get that ready in the morning? Oh, you know, not too long. Mostly I just kind of sit here and think diabolical thoughts, you know? <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. What's the uh, key to it, like wax or what? Yeah, yeah, I use, uh, it's called, um, well, I have some called fisticuffs. And then I have stuff I've been using lately is uh, fireman's, fireman's wax. Fisticuffs, sounds fist like a bar cuffs. fight. <laughs> yeah, oh, on the front, it's two guys like, you yeah, know? right? It sounds like a bar fight, fist to cuffs, <laughs> handcuffs. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So what's going on, Michael? I want you to just tell everyone uh, about yourself right now. Like, obviously, you're an amazing musician, but you do a whole bunch of different things. Like, you perform, you write, you do a lot of um, stuff where you try to get, you know, film and uh, uh, you get a lot of your music on TV and film and commercials. But just tell all of our listeners about yourself. Uh, well, um, I guess the thing I've been doing longest is I've been a singer and guitar player for a funk band out of Los Angeles called Zen Robbie. And a couple years later, a couple guys approached me from, you know, a couple local legends was, uh, you know, Todd from Sublime and Brute Sezenka from the Zig Ends and, and Bud Gaw was a, a part of the original cast. And they wanted to start a family friendly, like children's music type act. And I had just put out um louis prima i want to be like you from the jungle book yeah uh, i did a cover of that and so they thought that's that was cool. cool so they called me to be a part of it and i got the call and i'm like who's in the band yeah yeah right. whatever music i'm, I'm in i'm in yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. And, well, uh, we're doing <laughs> background porn yeah i'm in i'm in <laughs> <laughs> whatever you need whatever you need and uh so we've been doing that and there's a lot of fun and exciting stuff happening with that and in between you know work with other bands got a couple you know i got a solo record it's kind of folky acoustic and, uh, you know, just trying to stay creative uh, keeps me out of trouble. Now, how about like, quarantine? Got a lot more time to work? Oh, man. You know, in the beginning, you know, I'm sure Drake will say the same thing. We're like, what? A couple of weeks off? Woo, I'm going to grow a beard. And, you know, <laughs> kick back, you know. And, uh, and then going from, you know, several nights a week playing shows to not playing at all is a bit of an adjustment. So, you know, just trying to stay creative in other ways, you know. Uh, me and the Jelly guys have developed a TV show, and some of it's a cartoon. So we've been having a lot of fun doing the animation for that. Uh, been doing some voiceover work. That's been a lot of fun. You have a uh, great voice. Like I was watching one of your videos. You. Like you have a you have a White Claw video, and it's at the beginning. It's like a oh, yeah. man's voice, and I'm assuming that's your <laughs> voice, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we I haven't heard this trick. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to play it on the show because I love oh, white, yeah, yeah. I have a, white, claw, I have white claw here. Maybe we'll start drinking a little early. It's 10 a.m. Right. Hey. <laughs> last time I got fucking never tanked, asked. My, I was passed out by four in the afternoon last time. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. All right. <laughs> no, but you have, we hired someone to do some of like a trailer and a little bit of stuff for the show. It was um, great. I, I left my ass off. <laughs> but next time we'll just ask you to do it. Cause you have like the same voice. I'd love to, and when I heard it, I had an idea of like a uh, ah, let's like, hear you know like I a, like the creativeness. So, you know what I, what I loved is in the in the trailer you talked about you know not only how different you guys are but 
celebrating those differences and and you know i think there's something pretty uh profound to be you know said about being able to to laugh you know what i mean and right. uh so i thought there was so much fun and humor to the to the um to the ad what if we did like a almost like a, a rocky two or a rocky three like ad where it's like we do some flashes and it's like drake you know, he's looking all serious and intent. He's like dripping in sweat. Well, I don't want to get carried away, but Ooh, you know, uh, <laughs> and uh, then we got Jimmy and it's just like, you know, battle royale, you know, and just, I, I don't know. I, I can see it all. I can see it all. We'll have to <laughs> workshop it a bit, but you know, the pieces are there. I got this. Where do we sign? <laughs> Adrian! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it writes itself, really. It writes itself. <laughs> Jimmy, you're really good at that. So, um, can you tell us about Jelly of the Month Club? Because this is you have you're trying to or you have done a little bit of a cartoon, and you were telling me yesterday that you're trying to pitch it out and try to get yeah. maybe get some deals. Tell us about that. Oh man, it's 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 really terribly exciting. We're all really pumped. Um, a couple months ago, we started working on the newest music video, and it's for a song called "Alama's Life for Me," <laughs> and uh, it's very much in the vein of a. Uh, Louis Prima, I bet you dig it, Drake. Yeah, and um, man. It, it's a, uh, it, it has some really funny things. Anyway, so we were thinking, you know, it'd be funny. We can't act some of this stuff out. Let's see if we can animate it, do like a real half-assed job. You know what I mean? Well, me and my bass player uh, James, who's just a genius, uh, we started geeking out with some of these programs. You know, Adobe Animate, Final Cut, and we put together the music video. And it, it just dropped like last week. So if anyone wants to check it out, uh, you know, it's on our Jelly of the Month Club YouTube and Instagram and all that. Anyways, we'll uh, in the show notes. Yes, awesome. totally put the show notes right there. And, and when we got done with it, we were looking at it like, whoa, this is, you know, we just we were just peeing our pants the whole time laughing at the <laughs> stuff we were coming up with because we could literally make it happen. Anything we came up with. And so from there, we started writing little sketches and thought to ourselves well what if we put this into a tv show I'm not sure when concerts are coming back and we talked about this and we, you know we did a, a few a few years we've been doing the show with the peanuts gang i don't know if you saw any pictures with uh, snoopy and charlie brown and us but uh it's called woodstock's music festival and in a nutshell our band's like a headliner of a festival and snoopy comes out as all these different rock stars he comes out as uh that's Prince, some cool shit run dmc <clears throat> Uh, and then Charlie Brown and the gang are our roadies. And one year, me and Charlie had a guitar battle. Um, I you know, love it. Dude, I got to see this. We, Dude, it, it's, it's insane. So it's just as much fun for the parents. That's kind of our whole yeah. ethos with Jelly of the Month Club. We want to have, uh, we're, we're all about entertaining and educating and inspiring kids, but we also don't want to drive mom and dad nuts because, you know, kids are. They want to listen to the same thing like 30 Fuck times that, in a row. Exactly. Your dad, mom and dad are like, oh boy. You know, yeah. hiding hiding the Wiggles CD and stuff. I mean, I love the Wiggles, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like hiding X, Y, and Z, you know? <laughs> so, What's that one so yeah, it's a, it's a really fun song? project. What's that one song that keeps going on? Oh, God, it's really annoying. Oh, Is it the shit. shark one? Yes, that little baby shark thing. Oh, no. God. <laughs> I'm going to play that right now because I love no. that song. It's a guilty pleasure. No. Me too, man. Me too. It's snappy. No. It's a real toe tapper. That has <laughs> to drive parents batshit crazy, though. <clears throat> So Chris we're trying would always to be play the alternative that. to that. Yes, <laughs> and it's very, it's super entertaining. <laughs> I've never gotten to see it Stand live, by. but it's so, you're like, the show is so entertaining. Um, like from the videos I've seen, where can people, obviously when things open up, did you only play in SoCal or would you guys take it, hit the road at all? Oh, we've taken it all over the country. We played uh, theme parks in the Midwest. We've played some resorts in like Arizona area. We played the, uh, the Fairmont Scottsdale Princess. That was a beautiful place. And um, yeah, I mean, we, we've also, we also play very small shows. Like we call, we call around and he used to do every Wednesday, um, me and one of the other guys, uh, Todd from uh, Todd Foreman, he had the day off as well. And we would go around and see if any schools around the area wanted a concert. And we just, you know, show up for free and just, just play, you know, half hour or whatever. And um so it's, we played shows as small as that, and, and we're continuing to up until the lockdown, uh, and, and as well as, you know, this giant stage at, at some of these theme parks. Knott's Berry Farm was probably my favorite. It was a, That's pretty rad. It was a rad show. Are there any videos that you recommend we, we can, or anything that we can play over here to 
like, should we play a llama's life or is there anything else you'd rather show or what do you think? Man, uh, you know what? There is just like a veritable plethora of all kinds of different stuff that we have to offer. Um, we you got a really so much stuff. <laughs> uh, we got a funny song that uh, me and Angelo from Fishbone did together. Uh, we have, uh, you know, I would play the llama one. Got I it. mean, it's, it's, it's too much fun. And if any of you guys out there got an uh, uncle at Nickelodeon, give me a call. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to play this right now. One sec. Yeah, yeah. You're getting good at this, Drake. Thank you. Getting faster, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I wonder you meant, I'd tell you what I'd be. And no doubt about it, it's a llama's life for me. I'd wear my little llama shoes and drink my llama tea. Sip the drama for your mama, llamas living drama free. Don't you let life get you down, cause you're the cat's pajamas. Let your worries roll right off of your back and just say, No problem. Let's learn a lesson from the llamas and live the drama free. If it's good enough for llamas, well, it's good enough for me. Jelly of the Month Club, a llama's life for me. Dude, that is so sick. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I love the cartoon stuff. We did one little cartoon on, from one of our shows, and hella people was talking about, dude, I love that little cartoon. I can be able to do more cartoon sketches. Like, you know, it just hits more people. Let's us as yeah, adults yeah. get back to our childhood a little bit and go, fuck, the world right. ain't as serious it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Childhood was HR puffing stuff, though, and that shit's <clears throat> crazy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well your your animation on that video is um it's like top notch and that's definitely something that you could see Thank on you. like a nickelodeon or a disney or awesome. something like that and it's just Thanks really happy much, music man. so happy yeah you know we do a lot of that swing stuff we do a lot of ska some surf we even do like a a lot of soul kind of bass stuff we did a we did an anderson pack cover uh, a couple of months ago um when the trolls movie came out Nice. And, uh, you know, just try and have fun with it. You know, it's all about just having a good message. And, the swing uh, definitely has a good uh, a good vibe. We're like Trey Pop and Daddies and all them back in the day. Oh, it's just yeah. happy music. You know, just fucking. Mm -hmm. that was Absolutely. Shit, Absolutely. <laughs> and it gives us horn players jobs, stuff like that. <laughs> hey, That's I can be right. a kazoo player. You know? <laughs> yeah, you can, Jimmy, actually. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Biggest handed kazoo player out there. <laughs> Jimmy's learning the, the ukulele, or sorry, the, the ukulele. 
Believe and me, so me. how's that going, Jimmy? Are you still practicing? I'm still messing with it, yeah. I, I, just, I just got it hanging on the wall right now. I've made a nice little stand for it. Looks pretty now. And <laughs> presses my girlfriend. She comes over and sees it on the wall, you know. It's like, oh, <laughs> you play. You're like, yeah, you know. Not right now, but. <laughs> <laughs> One day, babe. How many of those instruments do you play? Like in this track, for instance, Mike, like there was a whole bunch of the instruments. I know you produce all of this stuff, right? And you mix mm -hmm. most, a lot of it too. So how many instruments were you playing on that particular track? Um, you know, sometimes we outsource, sometimes, you know, a lot of us are multi-instrumentalists. On this one, um, acoustic guitar, some electric guitar, they're kind of buried. Um, lead vocals, kazoo. <laughs> You're the kazoo guy? And that's it. So yeah. That's right. <laughs> I do need a kazoo tech, as it were. Well, there you go. Hey, we got a second job for you there, Chris. I'm a, I'm a guitar tech by trade, so I can pick up the kazoo. I was a harmonica tech for a while. Oh, shit. There you go. Different flute like Same though. thing, except you need like way less talent to play the kazoo. <laughs> yeah, right. A little paper in there, you know, you to screw off. That's <laughs> Chris, what was, what was it like, just real fast, what was it like being a harmonica tech for John Popper of Blues Traveler. What was that like? Was was it like difficult? A lot of spit. It, it, yeah, lots of spit. It was very difficult because <laughs> we were we talked before, but we were transitioning from Honer to um, his signature Fender series, which had replaceable reeds in them. So you had to actually take the harmonica apart and replace or clean Shit. the reeds in them, and that was a long development process. So it was. Man, I love John Popper so much. I would clean his dirty reeds like that, bro. Ooh, Sounds like dude. something Drake would say. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a few John Popper stories that would make you not love him as much. Oh. <laughs> Does that have to do with spit? <laughs> oh. McDonald's <laughs> and dirty reeds. <laughs> on on Colombian stuff. <laughs> so, so Mick, what's what's next on the list? What are you what are you working on now? What's what's coming out? When are you, when do you have any shows coming up? Do you have something that people can come see you at? Um, right Are now, I believe is confirmed. I'll be at Sea Legs on June 6th. Oh, my God, in Orange County. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, um, you're back. I'll be, I'll be doing that uh, solo, uh, possibly with a couple guys behind me. Um, and up next, yeah, we're, we're, we're mainly shopping the show. I mean, we literally finished cutting the pilot uh, a couple days ago maybe like about a week ago. So we've been shopping that. Nice. And then I actually have um, a solo album. I've been kind of working on the back burner a little bit here and there. It's, it's kind of soul based. And I sh actually shot Drake, uh, one of the tracks the other day. Yes, the, the 007 the James, one. Yeah, it's called James Bondage. And it's, uh, <laughs> nice. That's why he thought a, of me. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so yeah, you know, just trying to stay creative with shows not really big on the horizon. I'm I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, but it's good to hear something. I mean, June. I mean, yeah, you're talking to people yeah. that have nothing this whole year, and you start hearing a couple of people pop yeah. up with just one date. It's huge. <laughs> I know. Uh, I just talked to Ivan from Common Kings, and they have a mm -hmm. show in, in Tahoe in July. Nice, nice. Let's go. Nice. I think with yeah. slight, I think slightly stupid's with them. Oh, a couple people. Wow, so they're going on with that that summer tour, huh? It looks like it. So I think it's in July twentieth or something like that, twenty sixth. Right so they're on. I'm going up to Tahoe to see that, but it's good to hear just dates popping up. You know, just something popping up. It's a sign. It's, that's the only venue that's not like a outside restaurant area. Which I love those gigs. I, I play that lounge jazz stuff all day. It's some of my favorite stuff to sing. But um, but yeah, as far as big concert venues, it's it's nice to see them popping something. up here and there. What yeah. about theme parks? You play a lot of theme parks, and is that something mm -hmm. that I mean? Are these places are they open? ever gonna be able to open again? Man, open? I get the I get the from Cedar Parks. Uh, I get what's called the Berry Vine from from the Knott's Berry Farm kind of faction of things, mm -hmm. and uh, just updates on stuff. It, it's not looking great as far as opening everything up right away. You know, I I I, uh, I really feel for everybody that's. No, not able to work there right now. Um, there is some parts open. You can go get like the, like the Taste of Knott's Berry Farm is open right now. But you know the shows aren't on. The roller coasters aren't on. You know, I think they're kind of following whatever Disney does. You know, mm. they, they seem to kind of be doing exactly what all the theme parks seem to have to be following the same, 
rules, you know. Meanwhile, in Florida. Yeah, right. <laughs> and China. <laughs> China's having full-blown festivals right now. China yeah. is? Oh, uh, oh, yeah. I think Disney in California is the only Disney location in the world not open. Hmm. I think. I think. Wow. If I'm wrong, we can edit that in post, right? <laughs> no, no, no. We are all about spreading disinformation on this show. That is totally fine. That's why we have to be here. Uh, we don't fact check. We don't do any of that. We say whatever we want, and it's the truth. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> is your junk a hairy shit show? Is your partner coughing up too many hairballs? Say no to wax, razors, and lasers. <laughs> and yes to the Lawnmower 3.0 by Manscaped. Its skin-safe technology prevents ingrown hairs, irritation, blood, sweat, and tears, ensuring smooth entry, and great head without the hair. And your partner can kiss that pube floss goodbye. Use on your back, balls, boobs, and butthole. It's time to say bye-bye to the bush and hello to the Lawnmower 3.0 by Manscaped. Visit Manscaped at manscaped.com today. So for your show, for your the show that you're pitching, is it like a 30 uh-huh. minute long thing? Is it like a 20 minute thing for Netflix? Right. Or where's the ideal place that it could be seen and how long would it be? That's a great question. You know, the pilot that we shot is more of a proof of concept. I think that the script is perhaps about 80% there. Um, I'd love to get a professional script writer in there and be like, hey, this and this was bangerang, this and this got to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe reorder it like this and you guys are golden, you know? Uh, so, but anyways, uh, the the kind of vision of it is like a, a 20, 22 minute episode. And it's, it's like um, the Wiggles with the Rat Pack attitude, mm-hmm. but it's like a variety show. So some cartoons, we have some Muppets, we have some backup singers, they're called the Jelly Bean Queens. <laughs> and they're like the Andrew sisters when they sing, but like when they talk, they're just like total like, you know, Ramones, you know what <laughs> I mean? Kind of attitude. Don't even like each other, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we get that. And, uh, it's, uh-huh. it's, <laughs> It's, it's just it's just a, a barrel of laughs and it has you know all of us have backgrounds in education um myself is you know very limited but you know i've, I've taught a little bit the other guys like dr todd he has his master's in education and and uh, oh, really scotty and jimmy has have been teachers uh my drummer's been a teacher at mi for 15 years he's taught like he's like also been a tutor of the stars and whatnot so you know, with the education of ba- uh, educational background i really feel like we have a, a smart show with a lot to Right, a lot to offer, and it's and it's and it's funny, you know. We have a Van Halen joke in the first thirty seconds. I mean, it's it's hip. <laughs> comedy That's definitely is the way. Yeah, comedy is <laughs> definitely the way. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's how you break down people's barriers and and you know, insecurities or or hangups. You know, very true, very true. Well, going back to your company, is is that your company, Bad Cat Music Group, or is that something that you founded with somebody else, or? Oh. You did some homework. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like a, I had a deal on the line a couple of years ago and I just built that as like a kind of umbrella of everything I've ever done as an independent artist. Mm-hmm. So all the, all the placements and, and accomplishments are there, but it, that bad cat is, is like a, it's like a pseudo business. Of, yeah. So to speak. Umbrella. You know, but, uh, but it's like a, it's a collective of, of everything I've, I've placed in, in different you know, TV shows and films and whatnot. I mean, there's some huge, huge like names and, and companies and networks that you've been on. Um, do you have any advice for anybody who is a musician and is trying to get their, um, their music placed on anything? Honest to God, I was literally just clicking through YouTube videos this morning on learning new ways to do it. <laughs> I mean, uh, nine times out of 10, it's because I, you know, knew a guy who knew a guy who blew a guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, hey, I know him. The other one, <laughs> and the other one time. That's how we uh, get everything through Drake. <laughs> was sheer luck. <laughs> it was sheer luck. You know, I, I had a friend that was at a, a company during the World Series one year, and Chevy sent me their commercial, their World Series commercial, cut to my song, and I'm like, holy shit! And I forwarded it to my dad, and they emailed me, hey, uh, can you share it like this and not like that? So you know, cause we can see what you're doing. I'm like, Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and last minute they went with Ray Charles. Uh, can you believe it? I know. But, uh, <laughs> but so, yeah. And, and so it's, it's really about luck. And sometimes those are nice little paydays and sometimes it's not much, but it'll lead to something else. You know, right. sometimes 
you land 30 seconds of a song on My Giant Life on TLC, and someone at TLC hears you and is like, oh, that's kind of cool. Let's use it for that too. And, you know, and then that ends up paying off, even if the first one wasn't anything. But, but really, it's, that's, that's been my kind of new frontier as we're shopping the, the, the TV show. I've amassed such a back catalog and have almost just as many in the can ready to go. Uh, that's, that's a pursuit worth pursuing. Yeah. <laughs> it's all building the resume too. It all adds up, making the resume bigger. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, just write, 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 you know, and make video, video, video. I mean, you have so many videos, like you're really good at it. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I, uh, man, I just did this, this one the, the week before it's, it's not all kids music, by the way. Uh, we, we dropped a song called I'm Coolin' with Zen Robbie. Did you oh, see yeah. that one, Drake? I don't know if I saw that. Wait, let me see here. I was watching some stuff this morning. We can play it, though. Let's hear it. You know, if, would you mind throwing that one on? Because uh, Let's I'm down. fucking do I'm down. it. I, that one I thought died in a hard drive that crashed oh, on me, is. and I found a cut on Dropbox. Kind of massaged it a little bit and decided right. to put it out. We have been sitting on it like a year, so... So it's Zen Robbie, just for listeners, it's Z-E-N space Robbie, R-O-B-B-I. What, is that, what does that mean, by the way? <laughs> so when we first started out, um, we were working with a record company out of Huntington Beach called Soul Surfer Records. And it was with a guy mm-hmm. named Scott Rickett, who became like a, a real good friend and a bit of a mentor in a lot of ways for me in my early years. And uh, his partner, Dave Ezrin. Uh, Dave Ezrin was uh, the son of very famous and successful and amazing uh, music producer, Bob Ezrin. And uh, Bob Ezrin did Pink Floyd, The Wall, uh, Kiss Destroyer. I mean, everything, you know, he's the man. He's the man. And um, and so when we were shopping to labels in the early days, uh, you know, Bob loved the sound, but he hated our band name, which was like. (laughs) I don't even remember. It was like the tall boys. There's some, you know, some dorky high school punk rock name, you know? And uh, so we hit him with like 30 names and he wouldn't shop us until we hit him with a name that he liked. <laughs> and so after hitting him with a bunch, one of our roadies at the time said, Hey, why don't you take Bob Ezrin's name and scramble the letters and see if you come up with anything good <laughs> and hit him with it. And then if he likes it, then you can tell him, Hey, by the way, it's your name. And, and so we hit him with it. He loved it. And, there it's stuck. Shit. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna play it right this second. Remember the beginning, Drake. This took like 20 minutes to do. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But baby, I could be so wrong Got to change my ways I've been too tall for days And for a while I was too far gone One pocket full of hope The other pocket full of soul hey. And if you need some I got a little more In the house made out of glass With a mouth made out of stone If life is but a dream Then I'll forever sleep Sometimes I wonder why I do the things I do But now a queen needs a king That knows how to rule But I'm a little bit of bad A lot of bit of bougie A soup soup and doobie I'm the number one, ba rum ba bum bum Sorry, I can't tell you why Sometimes I'm just out of my mind But I'm cooling Yeah, I'm cooling I swear that I do better, baby Give me time While I'm cooling Yeah, I'm cooling The news that the brand new jams got you giving up the blues. May the melody play, may the rhythm be the guide. Forever may the harmony reside in my pocket full of hope while the devil's at the door. Hey. Why she got the knock, knock, knock? How she get my home address and the number to my phone? And the 
cycle goes on and on and on and on. Sorry, I can't tell you why. I'm a hair trigger tonight, but I'm cooling. Yeah, I'm cooling. I swear it. Can I download it on, on iTunes? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to download it right now. I'll be pumping that shit. Oh, on my thanks, boat. man. I'll be pumping that shit. Hell on my yeah. Boat. Hell yeah. That sounds very like Univox fuzz. Okay, what do I, what I look under if I want to look up that song right now on Apple Music? All right. I think it's under Zen Robbie. Yeah, Z E N R O B B I. I'm cooling. What, one word or two? Uh, two words. Zen Robbie, right here. Okay, artist. And we'll put the links. We'll put the links in in the show notes as well, too, so everyone can Thank download you. it and and bump it on their boats with their hose. Mm-hmm. I'm cooling right here. Bam, ad. You got it. Hey, thanks, brother. Oh, oh yeah. You That's have a new bumps, fan. Dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate That's, it, man. I figured he would be downloading the Jelly of the Month Club stuff for all of his girlfriends because <laughs> they're a little young. Uh, my new girlfriend's <laughs> 45 years old. New girlfriend just turned 45. <laughs> Drake. Can we hear about her? Like, are you going to, you never tell the, you never talk about it on the show, but is this something that you're going to like, is she like special now that we're going to talk about her? I mean, she's my girlfriend. All right. I mean, well, let's tell us. I mean, this is big news. She just turned 45 <laughs> over the weekend on uh, February 12th. We got she's that. Pretty, ama- pretty amazing woman. Uh, she's beautiful as all hell. Nice girl. Very, very nice lady. I mean, you changed your sheets for her, so it must be serious. Actually, I'm wa- I wash my sheets like once a year. I really do. Because I don't fucking give a fuck. You know, I fuck dirty whores. <clears throat> so this one I care about. She's coming over tonight. So I'm going to make her dinner tonight. Those Ooh. tacos, Drake. Those badass tacos. Oh, oh, I make. Those are so good. And then I'm going to, I wash my sheets today so they smell fresh for her. And I'm going to take her in the hot tub. She's got a badass new hot tub. And, you know, nice. I'm going to play that song tonight for her. Yeah. Hell I'm cool yeah. in. We're cool <laughs> in the hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy right now. Are you going to, uh, do you remove all of like the paraphernalia, like the chains and all that stuff? <clears throat> I do not. They're still stuck to the wall. No, yeah, they're still hanging up all the whips and everything. Is she cool it's, with it's, it? it's ambience. It's ambience. I actually took her to Jay Bug's house when I was in Hawaii. Me and yeah. her went over to Jay Bug <laughs> and, uh, and Elle's house and we had dinner with them. She passed out on their couch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm very happy for you, Jimmy. That's Thank a, you, Drake. That's great. Cause I can, you definitely seem happier. Definitely. <laughs> I'm definitely happy. <laughs> um i'm gonna okay. try to download, download all this all the albums right now just to yeah so hell yeah brother hope you enjoy them man <clears throat> download all your guys albums what kind of what kind of guitar do you play mike that's oh man break well i know <laughs> you would like, i know you would like me asking that question chris so <laughs> well um currently my main guitar is a gnl it's a fallout Okay. And uh, recently got an endorsement with them maybe like a year and a half ago, two years. And it's literally like the, I couldn't have designed this thing better for what I do, for what I want it for. Excuse me. It's super lightweight and it's got a, a P90 and a double humbucker. And so it gives me that really nice, warm, clean, fat tone. If I want to play something pretty in some major sevens, or if I want to, you know, click it all the way to the bridge and just open it wide open. I mean, I can get like a Pantera metal out of that if I need it, you know? Oh, nice. And for those it's of you- pretty badass. You wanna see it? I got some custom shit on it. Yeah, yeah, go, go get it, go get it. 
And for those of you who don't know, while you're having that, uh, GNL is the company that Leo Fender started after he left Fender. Oh, oh really? Bought them. Yeah, so they're all um, Fender inspired in <clears throat> direction of what Fender was. Cool. I just downloaded all of Zen Robbie's albums and singles and shit. Hell yeah, brother. <clears throat> yeah, Jimmy. Gotta support, gotta support our people. Absolutely. I appreciate that, man. Mm, so, these are my battle axes. Wow. Mm-mm, this is Wilma. <laughs> the sexiest redhead you ever did see and yeah so it's got the uh that's like my favorite combination of pickups mm-hmm. i found these bitch and um can you see those all right oh no. like buffalo buffalo yeah. nickels yeah yeah. Oh, yeah for the knobs i thought they were crown royal oh. caps for a second <laughs> yeah that'd be pretty tight actually and that would then, be kind of cool damn, crown royal got, got dangerously on the back there oh, sick. yeah so that's wilma and yeah dude like six pounds. Yeah, they're great. What's the standard guitar way? Depends on the guitar. It changes. Yeah, a lot. yeah. Like, can, like if that was a standard guitar. Oh, that, so a normal weight's over, well, definitely over six pounds. Six pounds is a lightweight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, what, what do you think a Les Paul would weigh? Like twelve pounds? Uh, yeah, they're around ten to twelve, depending on the you know something like that. It all, Jimmy, it all changes based on like how dense the wood is and what cut you're using and all that kind of okay. stuff. Just also trying to like help people out there listening. They could, you know. Oh, six pounds. Is that good or bad? You know? Yeah. They're <laughs> heavy because they have two different cuts of wood. They have one base cut and then a maple cap on them. Mm. It's really nice having something light when you're running around. You know, a lot of the jelly shows, I'm doing laps like Jagger, you know, running around, having food fights and whatnot. <laughs> and and then this is my other one. I, I hope you don't mind. I want to show one more, but it's just because it's yeah. kind of interesting. This is a Bigsby guitar. Now, typically, Bigsby is known for the bridges. But yes, this is, dude. I have, I have like one website I found on this thing. It is oh. a prototype. It's oh. a Bigsby prototype. Now, if you look at that, you see it looks like a Willy Wonka headstock. Yeah. It's, it's like cool an exaggerated looking. Fender. It's bitching, right? Yeah. I saw this on the wall at True Tone, and I walked sexy. in there first. Yeah, I call her Weapon X because it looks like the old school <laughs> '80s Wolverine, right? That mustard yellow, and it has a mustache. It was surprised. And it has some mustache. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite guitar I found just like in a pawn shop. It's who knows, either from the 50s to the 60s, like an all mahogany um, uh-huh. acoustic. And it's just the best. You just can't beat those random finds. You just sit down. And play, right. Holy shit. This is this is everything. Oh, yeah. I love you know, watching. Lo- um, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just saying, I, I, I like to follow Dakota. He's the guitar tech for Dirty Heads. And he has this, another Instagram. I forget what it's called, but he just oh, there's cool guitars. Yeah, and it's so cool. He finds all these cool guitars on tour, and he just like d- he just makes a little video about them. It's really he finds some really like crazy looking stuff. Oh, I gotta follow that page. That sounds rad. Right? Guy, I've toured with him. He's a pawn shop whore. Like, <laughs> and, okay, what's the Instagram? What's the Instagram, Chris? Guitars. Dakota's cool guitars. Dakota's cool guitars. Well, shout, that's what you do out. too. That's what you do too, Jimmy. Like you find stuff and you just like resell it, right? You make it better. I flip gas pumps, barber chairs, all <laughs> that shit. Hot rods and Harleys, old school rods, yeah, fat man, hogs dude, and young broads. Like, Women, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finding a killer guitar like that, even if it's a rando, it's like someone building a bitch and bike and all these rad parts that knew exactly what he was doing. Exactly. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh Jesus, the craftsmanship. I mean the style. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm yeah. Gonna, so this is that makes me pretty badass. I like that. Yeah, man. I wanted to show you. It's the, it's number two off the assembly line. Oh, oh shit! Man. She's gorgeous. One's probably still at the factory. <laughs> it was a prototype. They never went to production with it. Dude, that is. And it epic. came with these. Yeah, I'm I'm pumped on it, man. How did you get started? How did you get started playing guitar? Like, w- w- were you influenced by someone in your family, or just like a certain artist? My cousin Melissa brought around a boyfriend that played Master of Puppets on the guitar. Sick. And I was just oh. like, I want to know how to do that. You know? How old were you? And I was, I was probably 11, 12, something like that. I wish I would have got started even earlier. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Remember when I first started, I like just picked up a guitar and we had like this super, you know, tough neighbor who was a cop and he saw me with the that doesn't make him tough yeah nobody was he was like a badass motherfucker but he <laughs> he walked up to me like on the porch and i was like sitting there with the guitar kind of just like 
barely playing chords and goes, don't you ever stop that. Cause even if you can just hold that thing, all the ladies will come to you. <laughs> and the next day, and the next day he was playing Wonderwall. Yeah. He's a- <laughs> you know what? <laughs> my, my, it's funny you say that because I got a similar pep talk from, from that guy. And, and he was, I was, I was, I was talking to him about like, about, you know, we were, we, he would come around and we would throw a football and I was never super, super athletically inclined, but uh, I used to, you know, talking about that, and he goes, dude, don't play sports. Play guitar. With football, you got practice every day. You got Friday night games. You got two-a-days. You got hell week. You got summer practice. Right. And then you got to make varsity, and then you got to be starting, you know what I mean, to even really press the girls. But with the guitar, you know, two chords. <laughs> <laughs> Levels of playing field. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and that spoke to me. You know, <laughs> I got my- a better, simpler <laughs> life without body pains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the trumpet's the exact opposite. If you play the trumpet, the women will run the other way. Hence why you're playing it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, maybe two years ago or a year and a half ago, White Claw came into the world and it took the world by storm. Okay. And you are very fast. You're, I feel like you're like South Park, Mike, like where you, it's like you see something and you, you jump on it. And so you made this video that I think is absolutely hilarious. And it makes me want to just start drinking White Claw. So I'm going to play this right now. Hell yeah. Play it. I might crack one with you. <laughs> Don't do that. That's a coming out drink. Don't start slipping now, Drake. <laughs> the year is somewhere around 2020. See, the no one can be certain. What is for certain is that the nation has run out of White Claw <laughs> and the people are on the brink of war. <laughs> there is a mystic land across the desert sands where they found the key to happiness and put it in a can and call it White Claw. White Claw. So good when it hits your lips. <laughs> We're on the holy quest to put it to the test. It knows no defeat. It can't be beat. It's best with all the rest. It's freaking white claw. White claw. Black cherry is my fave. Delicious all the way. Except the grapefruit's just okay. It's white claw. White claw. If you're so inclined. Grab yourself a lime, mix it with some Tito's, and then kiss your ass goodbye. It's called a Bob Claw. Kids, don't try this at home. But if you drink responsibly and legally, take it from me. Enjoy some White Claw. White Claw. Ain't no laws when you're drinking claws. White Claw. That's too funny. (laughs) <laughs> that's too fucking funny you gotta watch the video everybody so we'll post it in the link because <laughs> there's these disgusting bathing suits where did you find them? <laughs> they didn't do it for you <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a onesie for a for a woman but it's just like a hairy man's chest that's disgusting that's so <laughs> <laughs> need to be manscaped yes <laughs> you're right speaking of <laughs> um yeah, i yeah. had some free time that summer and <laughs> Hey man, I, I hear you. Well, it's all about the vod claw. I mean, before before I go on stage, I'll do a vod claw, <clears throat> or I'll I'll do tequila. What well, I don't know what that's called, tequila claw. But yeah, you fill up. I fill up a big yeti, one of those giant yetis, because it keeps it nice and cool. I, I fill it up with ice, then I pour vodka or or tequila, with I squeeze some lemon uh. juice and some lime juice, and then I top it off with white claw. And then he spills it on stage. Well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> That's only if something is not right on the stage, and then it just Ooh. falls. Is, is, Red, is Red Bull like so early two thousands or something? Mm-hmm. Red Bull vodkas. Yeah. Are they red? Red, red what? Red. red. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm aging myself right now. <laughs> red Bull gets me so wired, and then I literally crash. Like I fall. Like I can't keep my eyes open. Does that happen to you guys? Yeah, dude. Yep. That definitely makes me sleepy. That's weird. Yeah. I love Red Bull. I love Red Bull. But it actually puts me to sleep. Maybe because we all have like ADHD or something. 
That is very true. Yeah, it's like our Ritalin. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> okay, well, you want to know what doesn't make you fall asleep? It's uh, cocaine. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> Wait, but oh. seriously, I have a I have something that really needs to be addressed. And oh, it's not this is a this is a Valtrex. problem. I heard Valtrex. No. Okay. The pandemic is bad, but this is worse than that. This is a epidemic and needs to be fixed. It's leaf blowers, everybody. Oh fuck. Drinking is fucking leaf blowers. Oh, oh yeah. I what what is I, what's the hashtag? Stop the blowing. Well, there goes your social life. Oh, I know, Drake. Oh, that that's good. <laughs> I wrote that on a post-it this morning when I thought of it. I'm like, that's awesome. I, I should, the delivery was whack. But let's let's do it again. Let's do it again. Set me up. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag stop the blowing. Yeah, right. That's great. Well, you're supposed that's... to say it again. Hashtag oh, uh... stop the blowing. <laughs> Just I'm leaving well, all. There goes... <laughs> <laughs> there goes your social life, Drake. Okay, no, but seriously, Poor are you, Jesse. do you guys know that, in, at least in California, and especially Los Angeles, there is an ordinance, a city ordinance, that was passed in 1998 that says, no gas-powered blower shall be used within 500 feet of a residence at any time. Both the user of such a blower, as well as the individual who contracted for the services of the user, if any, shall be subject to a $100 fine. And if your neighbors can't or won't control their gardeners after your polite requests, report a blower in progress to 877-275-5273. Stop okay. the snitching, bro. Stop the snitching. No, oh, no. Look, this no. has to this has to stop. Are you gonna get a class action lawsuit against all your all the gardeners down there? This has to stop. <laughs> Look how shiny our domes are, Timmy. I know. Come on, hold on. Let me get you real quick. <laughs> hey, right. Hey, do you burn? <laughs> I, my head fucking burns in the sun. You know what? When I first started shaving uh, uh, a little bit, but, you know, uh, you've been doing it a while, though, right? Yeah, fucking 20 years. But Hawaii, yeah. I got a little burnt. And, you know, it's funny. Mm. We're in Hawaii, and I don't use suntan lotion or, or chapstick and that shit because I think it's all gay. <clears throat> so we're it's in Hawaii. We're sitting it's on the, very healthy for you. No, it's not. So we're sitting on the beach. And part of my rule is I won't personally put suntan lotion on or sunblock on. If, that my, if my girl wants me to put it on, she has to spray it on her tits and then rub it all over me. So we're on the beach, on, on uh, Electric Beach on Oahu a couple weeks ago, and all of a sudden she's rubbing her tits all over my body, and everybody around's going, what in the fuck are you guys doing? There's kids around here. I'm like, hey, calm down. And like, so she goes, I won't put sunblock on, only if I put it on my tits and rub it all over them. So they're like, well, I go, yeah, because that shit's gay, but if she puts it on her tits, it's kind of not gay, right? Oh. It, 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 it. <laughs> so we're literally on the beach, and she's rubbing her shit all over my head, fuck her oh, tits man. everywhere. This is why I have a winner. She is, oh. This is why she is my girlfriend. Oh my god! Yeah. You're literally a little yeah. chapped. I go put the Keep shit on, come over and kiss me. Right. <laughs> I'm getting all the safety, and I'm not gay. I mean, that's sound logic. Thank I, you. I can't argue. I can't. Right? <laughs> and watch, more people are going to start doing it when they hear this. Like, dude, that's a fucking great idea, babe. And the girls are going to be like, "Well, I guess okay, we care about you." You know. I smell a TikTok challenge that I could really yes. get on board with. We we need to do this. This would blow up viral. We 100% need to do that. Okay, so so what's the challenge? So it's literally like if you if you think do you think sunscreen is gay? Question mark. And then it's yes. literally, yeah, it's just Jimmy going like yes. And then what? And then you just feel like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, we're gonna need some music behind this, Rick. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. we'll put some Mike Danger some music in it. Obviously, that's the song. <laughs> Put what some jelly in the month club in the background. Right? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be the wrong kind of PR. <laughs> <laughs> Not to oh, try at home, no. kids. <laughs> a kid tries at home with your babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> if she won't do it, say she has a boyfriend coming over at night. <laughs> oh god, dude, that would be. F I mean, I th we got to try it. Like, why not? Do you have a TikTok, Mike? You know, I don't, but I kind of feel like I'm blowing it now. Yeah. Oh, now you're you drink. <laughs> we, we have one, but you, it's you like got... I posted something the other day, and I got us fucking banned for like a week. What? Yeah, but it's we're back. We're do? back. We're good. We're all good. <clears throat> I posted what something. What community from... guidelines did you? Yeah, I, yeah, right. I think it was might have been the fisting video or the video from the Tiger King. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dude, I, I want to do a TikTok uh, channel where it's all 
you know you see these ones where it's like they put the face on the nose and they make it dance and shit oh yeah, yeah. Well, i, I want to do like an eyebrow thing <laughs> dude and just like have like a you know popular today's hits and just have like a close-up of the eyebrows i, I don't know i feel like people would really uh just see relate the, see the chicks with the, the boobs that dance to the music you see those ones? Oh, see that's that's They're taking an idea and making it better jimmy well, yeah, do, right? <laughs> but the islands are still, these are still cool. You know, the eyebrows are still cool. But hey, how, how you about make your mustache dance. Make the oh, mustache man. dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll work. Practice. I'll work <laughs> Next time you're on, we better have that down. Yes, we will. You know, I just got a green screen suit, like the full body suit, like where you no pull it over way. your head and everything. We could get over here and do. You know what? Put little tiny bells on it and do jingle bells for <gasps> Christmas. <laughs> Bam! Oh Fucking God. million he's, dollar idea. He's an idea guy. See, I, hey, I, I, big I, I see the dynamic totally of how it works. <laughs> <laughs> he has great ideas until we're trying to figure out what to put on our merch store, and he has no ideas. Jimmy Drew for President's our best seller. That is. Thank you. Actually, that's not our best seller. Our oh, best Jimmy seller is our, is our um, just our regular show t shirt. Really? Yeah. I like the coffee cup. Actually, people have asked me about that coffee cup. So it's a great coffee cup. Yeah, Mike, we have, we we got to send you one of those coffee cups. Yeah, Please, we'll send you. I'd we'll love send one. you a coffee cup. Text me your address after this, and we'll send you one. And I'll we'll send okay. you. I I uh, we have new shirts now too. Hashtag stop the blowing because we need to end. We need to end this. Okay, I'm not I'm wearing that kidding. shirt. My wife's we gonna see that it. and be like, <laughs> I know, right? You're the you're the best, Drake. No, but seriously, is like, no, one no, thing... it's a leaf blower, babe. It's, it's a leaf exactly. yeah. <laughs> and it's too late. Yeah, right. there goes that. Yeah. No, but everybody hates leaf blowers. There's I know. No one. Why? They just are blowing it into. No... They're just blowing leaves onto your neighbor's yard, essentially. As long as they're off mine. <laughs> Dude, I called. I called Drake yesterday. Can we talk about this? Because we had just finished talking about the stop the blower shirts, and I went outside in Minnesota, where it's snowing. And like negative three degrees to take my dog out. And what do I hear? A fucking leaf blower. At 10 p.m. There was a snowblower? Dude, it was not a snowblower. It was like a little teeny engine, like a fucking leaf blower. I don't know what the fuck they were doing, but I'm on board now. I was pissed off. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Well, dude, Mike, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a blast having you on. Why don't you tell everyone where they can find you and all that jazz absolutely no thank you guys for having me on i'm a big fan of the show and a big fan of you guys so um yeah you can find me at uh mike dangerously.com that's m-i-c dangerously.com um also on youtube um you can follow the bands at zen robbie z-e-n-r-o-b-b-i and jelly of the month club and uh yeah I'll be that's, bumping your that's shit out of the delta out here on the boat we'll be bumping your shit so yeah i guarantee a bunch of people are gonna ask who you are so look for some more downloads coming <laughs> appreciate that a lot man thank you guys thanks Absolutely. so much for having me i really appreciate it it was a lot of fun well when you get ready to do something you want to come on and promote just let us know you're always you welcome back absolutely thanks so much absolutely hey, hell well, yeah boy thanks come on man mad love